Welcome everybody to Forza Horizon 5, and we're doing another seasonal championship. This one's called Easy Do Shit, uh, or as a spin on the pun of Easy Does It. And yeah, we're in B class German cars. In 400 yards, turn sharp left. And being in a German uh, car a seasonal championship, uh, we uh, get in there in what is obviously the quietest electric left. vehicle ever made, the Porsche Mission R. In 200 which, yards, yeah, turn sharp right. Certainly not in B class, but turn it's hilariously right. quick. And uh, yeah, really, really good car to drive on this game, quite frankly. So uh, let's speedily hurry on to the first yards, race. We'll I just thought we'd missed out on them, but we didn't. Yeah, big fan of plenty of German cars, so there should hopefully be some good ones to choose from here. So let's see where we're racing and uh, what we're going to be racing in. Near the airfield for one of them, and up near the desert for another. So we've got a brace of Audis. Got the S1, the RS6, the Avant RS2, original Quattro, RS3 Sportback, and the RS4 Avant. A few nice cars there, and then we've got the Type D Auto Union, which is hilariously quick and powerful, but doesn't have the best of handling given how old it is. Then we've got a load of BMWs, X6M and X5M, which I'm not a particular fan of, but then we've got the great uh, Z4 M Coupe, a couple of M3s and M5s, and then the Z3 M Coupe, which not a good looking car by any means, but has plenty of power from its inline six, and then we've got the BMW M1. Then we've got a few Mercedes, a couple of off-roaders, which I'm not really going to use given how much they weigh and not particularly great in terms of handling, but we've got the excellent AMG Hammer Coupe, which, yeah, 379 horsepower in a car that is not a Ferrari, a Porsche, or a uh, you know a Lamborghini is really rather impressive for the uh, 1987. Then we've got the Opel Manta 400. Then we've got a brace of Porsches, a couple more off-roaders. Uh, but then we've got the 944 Turbo, which is excellent. The 911 Turbo, and 11 Carrera, and the 356C Cabriolet, the Emery Special version, which yeah is a gorgeous looking car and uh, yeah not a upgraded resto mod. That has been overdone. It's the perfect balance between new engineering but keeping it kind of old style in terms of its performance and handling. And then we've got a bunch of golfs, so uh, yeah, with a Scirocco and a Class 5 Baja bug thrown in. So yeah, hmm, what to pick first? Because it's probably my, f well, I wouldn't say it's outright my favourite, but it is probably one of my favourites, if not the favourite. The Audi RS6 from 2003, 20 year old car and yet it's got 450 horsepower with 4.2 litre twin turbocharged V8, weighs just over 4,000 pounds but that's nowhere near as heavy as some modern RS6 versions and uh, yeah, got pretty good handling with the all wheel drive system and the like and uh, yeah, I absolutely love the way that this car looks as well so we'll choose this, not the most exciting uh, uh, vehicle to use by any means but it's a dependable one, and hopefully one that will give us a good start to this championship. So, yeah. I've been getting into my Audis a lot lately with the introduction of the new RS6. Which was put in the festival playlist. And uh, yeah, that's kind of got me hooked back on Audis, to be honest. So, there's no reason to choose this switch. Yeah. Blue uh, BMW and Mercedes out of the water with pure power back in the early 2000s. We weren't coming anywhere near close to this with their own five, so yeah, really, really good car. And it's going to deal with these off roadish conditions as well with the all wheel drive system. We So, yeah, we've uh, just had six cars announced to be put in this game in the next few, three or four weeks. So, we've got two cars coming via uh, GIFs, we've got two Coopers. Now we've not had many Coopers in a for in Forza games before. Um, you know, obviously quite a new company still uh, as an offshoot of Seat, but we've only had the Urban Rebel concept so far. But we have another concept car coming, which is going to be a full production car in a couple of years' time, or even next year, I think. And uh, yeah, and then we've also got the uh, Fermenter, which is yeah, a fantastic SUV and one that I've been really, really wanting to drive in a game like this. So. Uh, yeah, really looking forward to the both of those, especially since they are free. They'll be in the game from Wednesday, in your inbox, so you don't have to do anything for them. 
just accept the gift and you'll have both of those cars. Which is really nice. And yeah, then four cars by the festival players, all four of which I am also excited about. Especially the two older pickup trucks. We've got a Ford F-150 from the 80s, which, yeah, is one of the older Fords that we've had for a while. We've not had many new Fords from the 80s before. The only one that we've recently had, and now I say recently, and that was in the previous Forza game, was the Escort RS Turbo, which, yeah, is also from the 80s, so yeah, really excited for that. But then we've also got the uh, uh, Chevrolet K10 pickup truck from the early 70s, which isn't the same as the one that was used in the film The Driver from the late 70s, but it's damn near close by the looks of things, and uh, as a big fan of that film, being a big fan of car chase films, really, really looking forward to that as well. Then we've got the Hummer EV, which is just mad, 1,000 horsepower and 4.3 tons in weight, it's just hilarious in every way, and then we've got another Diberti car from form of the F250 which yeah we've never had an F250 in a Forza game before so looking forward to seeing what that like that's like as well so uh, yeah but the Audi there being as dependable as ever gives us a good first place position not a million miles ahead especially since we seemingly bottomed out on the landing but a win is a win regardless so uh, yeah there we go so let's move on to the second race and see if we can do just as well so yeah, a nice win in that first race, and I didn't realise when doing that race that it was a cross-country event, uh, uh, event, or even championship. So uh, yeah, that's going to obviously inform my decision a little bit differently now in terms of what to choose, given, you know, all-wheel drive vehicles are typically going to be the better ones to go for. Although obviously even, you know, this uh, 911 is obviously an off-road vehicle, but with only rear-wheel drive. Hmm. Mechanics tempting it is a decent SUV even though I'm by no means a fan of it overall especially due to how it looks um, X6 has plenty of power it's even lighter than the X5 in fact while having 20 more horsepower 52 extra pounds feet of torque we've picked an Audi already so I don't really want to go for them again I'm not a fan of it, but I'm going to go for the X6 because it's got decent handling um, for an SUV, pretty much the same as the Macan in fact, but it's got slightly better braking and yeah, it's got more acceleration because it has more power. So yeah, I'm not a fan of it by any means, certainly would prefer other BMWs in yeah, these games than any X6 or X5, but uh, BMW's done where it matters I guess in some respect in terms of pure power and that and it definitely has plenty of that so uh, yeah hopefully the power will make up for any of its other flaws it won't make up for how it looks unfortunately the best of starts. Definitely felt a lot quicker in the uh, Audi than this. But then this does weigh a thousand pounds more than the Audi, so a real surprise. This feels a little bit more sugar sluggish even though it has more than 100 horsepower extra. the biggest fan of cross country racing but considering the kind of cars we can choose I was tempted by that. Plus I did want to talk about the um, the updates uh, the, the update that is coming so which is exciting in of itself. Especially since all six cars are new to the Forza series. Which is always a big plus for me. As much as I want new uh, want cars that have not been in a Forza game for a while newer cars are at the end of the day a bit more exciting because it's something we've not had before. Granted we have had plenty of diverted vehicles in the past but this is at least a different kind of model that it's based on. You know we've never had an F250 in a previous Forza game. It's usually been the one, uh, the F150 
Obviously, we've recently had the F450 put in this game. But, yeah, it's usually been only the F150, so it's nice to have a different variant of the F series. But, yeah, the other five cars are definitely even more exciting, so, uh, yeah, which I'm really looking forward to. I think, I think the Hummer and the Fermenter are the two that I'm looking forward to the most in terms of, you know, modern kind of cars. In general, really, because obviously we've got plenty of EVs on these games now. Obviously, the uh, one of the Coopers is an EV, and um, the Hummer EV. So it's always nice to have more EVs because I am a big fan of them. I'm really enjoying driving a lot of them. Obviously, we recently had the Mission R, which is utterly insane. So, uh, yeah. Really looking forward to seeing what the EV from Cooper can do and a little Hummer. But I am old school in a lot of ways as well, so I am really looking forward to the old, two old school pickup trucks that we're getting in the F450 and the, uh, the Chevy. Which aren't powerful by any means in the stretch of imagination. I think they both have less than 200 horsepower. But, yeah, power, outright power has never been a necessary aspect for me to enjoy any car on this game, so. They'll be fun to drive regardless, and all of them should hope will be fun to upgrade in some manner as well, especially since there's a load of new off-road um, upgrades that have been put on this game as well. Coupled with new photo mode and new Explorer events to do as well. So, uh, yeah, despite my lack of love for the X6M there, it certainly had a comfortable lead over the rest of them, even more so than what the Audi had. Yeah, as you can see, more than three seconds ahead, whereas less than a second ahead with the Audi. So, don't like the car at all, but it definitely um, proved its worth in terms of being able to race against everyone else. So, uh, yeah, but nonetheless, let's get on to the third and final race and see if we can make it free for free. Right, for this third and final race, we have a couple of choices. We obviously have Mercedes and Porsche and Volkswagen. I'm tempted by Volkswagen, uh, they, all, they are all-wheel drive, but obviously they're not off-road vehicles by any means, but that shouldn't be too bad. Um, ignore this, they shouldn't really be in it, it's an upgraded um, version for off-road, that I, for extreme off-road sealer builds that I didn't get rid of. Um, but yeah, I am tempted by the Golf R, it's easily one of my uh, favourite kind of hot uh, hatchbacks on this game, especially in terms of more modern ones. Um, but also Porsche, you know, because obviously the Macan has the higher ground clearance, it's got the increased power, it's got the launch, I'm not sure why the Golf R has such a poor launch, but um, no, the Porsche is the obvious choice, we'll go for the Golf. It's a good handling car, uh, decent brakes, it's got a decent amount of power as well, nearly 300 horsepower. And, uh, yeah. Should hopefully be able to deal with any of the off-road conditions. And at the end of the day, the Audi wasn't a much higher ground clearance car than this, so and that managed, so it should be alright. If not, this has been the worst choice ever. <laughs> being on more sportier suspension is not going to help. A bit bouncy. Ooh, real bouncy. the jumps and the landings that are the uh, main concern with this. So how badly the Audi uh, dealt with that final jump on its race. Obviously being a bit of a lightweight getting through the furniture, road furniture is a bit more difficult. Whereas obviously being a big SUV you can just pretty much 
go through it without any real hindrance in speed, so there is that as well. But for now, we are dealing alright in fourth place, it's hardly a uh, shabby position to be in coming into the second lap. So, yeah, I'd like to hear your thoughts on the six new cars that come into the game. Like I said, I'm really excited for all of them. I don't see any problems with any of them being added in. I know some people aren't massive fans of EVs, they think they're you know, too, uh, are too slow in terms of top speed or the uh, lack of sound is disconcerting or anything like that, but I'm a big fan of them purely because they're a different kind of way of driving on this game. Take thing, different things into consideration, like top speed and the weight, extra weight that they typically have. But you also get the added bonus of instantaneous power and the uh, huge amount of torque you can get from them, especially outside coming out of corners. And the fact that their acceleration is also pretty damn great as well. So, yeah, I'm all for EVs coming in this game, and the more of them, the better. That it is, unless they're a Tesla. I'm really not a fan of Tesla, so outside of them, and yeah, more EVs, especially more of the. Um, Common, more, I don't say common, but more of the mainstream, easily purchasable kind of EVs. Like the Honda E. I'd love that car to be in this game. Such a unique looking car. Um, unique layout as well, only being rear wheel drive. As opposed to most EVs, which are all wheel drive. Struggling to maintain a podium position here. I suppose the 944 is doing as well as it is. That did not like the landing. It stopped even deader than we did. At the end of the day, when it comes to this game, it's just nice to see that even at this late stage in the game, you know, we're not technically all that far off the next Forza Motorsport game coming out, and yet even so, six brand new cars coming to the game and the Forza series in general is really, really cool. And then adding all the other extras and improvements that they're adding on as well, it's just really nice to see that this game continues to thrive even so long after it came out. I see so many other games have a a road map or anything like that when it comes to uh, their online stuff and you know their um, live action kind of games and whatever and they pretty much die within the first year whereas yeah the support for this has been amazing pretty much like all of the other games really especially the third one onwards so yeah it's really cool to see and yeah we just about get a first place fellow golf not far behind. Yeah, the lack of off-road capability outside of the all-wheel drive there did not harm us. But yeah, a lot closer in that race than the previous two, but still, 20 points is given to give us 60 overall, and yeah, that would put towards um, getting the Porsche Mission R that was in the previous epi uh, in the beginning of this episode. So yeah, it's well worth doing these championships because you get an easy 5 points. They don't take particularly long kind of fun, especially if you're driving the cars you like, and uh, yeah, gets you towards getting one of the new vehicles in the game, so uh, yeah, nonetheless, thank you for watching, like I said, I'd like to hear your thoughts on what's coming up in this game in the future, but nonetheless, I'll see you in the next one, bye.